In this video I'm going to help you get started with your HP 12C financial calculator. And I assume when you got this calculator you tried playing around with it and it didn't work properly and you got very confused. The reason for this is this calculator doesn't work in the same way as a normal calculator. It uses what's called RPN, reverse polish notation which works very in a very different way to an algebraic type calculator. You can change the mode, but I wouldn't advise you do. Um, it's best to learn how to use this calculator as it was intended. It's programmed this way for a reason, and it will become more intuitive over time. When you get good at it, you'll see why it's programmed this way, and you'll probably come to agree with me. Um, so the most important thing to be able to do is clear your calculator. You can't do any calculations with all your previous calculations still stored in there and you want to get in the habit of endlessly clearing memories when you turn it off when you turn it on otherwise you're going to get previous calculations interfering with the calculation you're trying to do now and you'll get very silly answers so if you do f and then clear x that just clears all of the memories so it's clearing the statistics menu it's me uh, memory and it's clearing the financial memories all sorts of memories are cleared by that it's just wiping everything the clear X just clears what's on the display, so if I had two, press two and enter, so we've got two on the display here, pressing clear X wipes that. So let's do some basic maths, so things like addition, subtraction, division, that sort of thing, very basic stuff. So in reverse polish, um, we have to do it in a very certain way, we've got number, then we press enter, then we put in our second number, and then we press the operation we want to do. So if you're doing 25 divided by 5, it's 26, so 25, enter, so that's putting that in one memory, and then 5, that's being stored in the display memory, and then pressing divide does that calculation. So just maybe see that again, so do 2 plus 2, so 2, enter, 2, plus. So follow these steps and you can do those basic um, calculations, though perhaps you don't want to display it like this. Um, so you could put just no decimal places after it, so you press F and then 0, or you could have 9 after it by pressing F and 9, but usually you'd be working with either 2 or 3 decimal places. Yeah. The most common sort of calculations you tend to do with financial calculators, what's called TVM or time value of money calculations. Uh, it's essential that you know what all these things mean or you're not going to get very far with this. So N is going to be number of periods, things like years, months, and so on. I is going to be your interest rate. It's important to note when you're putting values into the I memory, it automatically divides by 100. This I button is like I divided by 100. So if you want to put in 5%, you press 5 and then you press I. That puts 5% um, into the memory. Um, it's divided by 100. Um, PV is your present value. You've got your payment button here. So things like bonds, if it's paying you every six months or so, that payment button will take care of that. You've got your future value. So you could do um, compound annual growth rates or you could find compound interest on a savings account using these. If you had the present value, you had the number of periods you need your interest rate, you could find your future value. Just adding up all those interests that are compounding and get your principal at the end of that period. Um, it's important to know what these F and G buttons do. So you've got a lot of orange text. Pressing the F button allows you to access all of the orange text. So remember when we're clearing this, clear X clears the display, and F, clear X gets you this reg, which clears everything. Um, and the G button is in blue, and that lets you access all of these blue functions written on the bottom of the buttons. Uh, it's also really important that you get out of the habit of using this negative button. There's this change sign button here. So if you have 5 and you want that to be negative, press change sign, don't do the negative. You could multiply by negative one, but that's just a pain. Use the change sign button. Uh, this calculator is also really good for cash flow calculations. You've got um, CF0 for like an initial investment. You've got various cash flows. I think it's got about 80 cash flow memories. You can use those functions to calculate things like the internal rate of return and your net present value. This calculator can also do a lot of statistics. You can calculate things like standard deviation and the mean. Um, so you've got statistics functions in green down here, uh, rather blue. 
um, and then you've got the Sigma Plus button, which is your add to the statistics memory button. You can do single variable statistics or multivariable statistics. One of the really cool things about this calculator is it is in fact programmable. You can write programs. So for example, there's no function to do um, combinations and permutations on this calculator, but it is possible if you can be bothered to look up the solutions manual and write in the program for that and then use that program to do those calculations. So programming this calculator is not easy and will not um, come very quickly. It'll take a lot of work to learn how to program it. Um, it's not as e even as easy as computer programming. It's probably far harder because you can't see very easily what you've done. Also got great um, bond calculation functions. You've got price, yield to maturity. Uh, you can actually enter dates like 27th of January 1993 uh, and then put in another date and you can do the calculations between two dates um, and you've got a lot of great functions for amortization and you've got all your depreciation options here so this calculator can do a great amount of stuff it's a very good calculator though it takes quite a long time to learn and I've um, been compiling a number of videos explaining all sorts of things on how this calculator works and if you follow the link in the description you'll get a playlist that will take you through um, as much of the calculator as I understand and hopefully that will be helpful to you and thank you for watching.